Hi there, folks, and welcome to another update on the evolving situation we have in Iceland. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me today. It is Friday, September 26th. It's been almost three weeks since we did our last Iceland update. There's a new Met Office update to share some information on. Also got some interesting analysis from our good friend and viewer, Bruce Garner. So I wanted to put together another update, give you some more information as we inch closer and closer to whatever the next chapter is in this area here on the Reykjanes Peninsula. So there we're looking on the webcam, kind of a, a lousy weather day. It looks like it's pretty windy, kind of cloudy, but looking out over the Sunukur craters where we've seen the previous eruptions. Let's go ahead and get right to it here with our new Met Office update. Uh, this came out yesterday, September 25th. So you can see the, the headline there, entering new period of increased likelihood of an eruption. So the basic idea here <clears throat> is we're just now entering the window when an eruption or an intrusion is possible. It doesn't mean it's going to happen, you know, right when we enter the window, uh, just sometime, just we've come closer and closer. There's enough magma that's accumulated in that subsurface storage system <clears throat> that we have sufficient magma where we could see an eruption at any point. So basically from now, you know, probably through December or so, I think is what the models show us. This is the period of time when we're most likely to see something. But again, not a prediction, not a specific um, you know, forecast on when something's going to occur. We can't pin down the date. We just think based on all our data that we're now in this window where there's enough magma that's accumulated, enough pressure in the system that something's going to take place. Of course, there's all sorts of little variables that affect you know, exactly when an eruption takes place. And those are the things that are just hard to quantify and really assess with any degree of certainty. Um, so you can see here, they've actually raised the alert level up for the area, just knowing that they're a little bit closer now to the eruption or the next event taking place. Um, and let me just show you here what we have. We've got um, a simple graph that they put together here. This is just magma that's been accumulating in the subsurface system. And then basically we, we've hit this minimum threshold here, basically uh, 11 million cubic meters of magma is now modeled to now exist beneath the Svartsengi area. And that's the smallest um, accumulation we've seen with some of the past eruptions. So we know that we the system can erupt with at least that much magma. And now that we've hit that number, um, you know, anything's sort of possible. We're definitely sort of in that window. And then at, at the most, you know, we've seen as much as 23 million cubic meters of magma accumulate. Uh, that was from the December 18th eruption or no sorry that's that's the wrong date there sorry um and so we can see th that's the, the the highest degree so you can see the window there kind of projecting things out here and so it's anyone's guess as to when exactly it's going to occur but we're looking at something you know very likely taking place within the next few months um let's see anything else here from the met office update this was an interesting uh paragraph here <clears throat> kind of reiterating some of the things we pointed out. Once the lower volume is reached, it's considered we have entered a period with increased likelihood of a new event or eruption. Um, let's see, any eruption may an eruption may occur any time after this lower bound is reached. So they're looking at a time frame again from December 27th to December 18th, uh, just as a possible forecast. Again, nothing definitive there. I want to reiterate that. Um, so let's see, we also have a... A, uh, some analysis done by Bruce Garner, our, one of our viewers and friends here in the community. And I thought his analysis was worth sharing as well. Oh, wait, here we go. I have one more thing from the Met Office. I knew I had one more thing. So this is a graph showing all the previous eruptions and even the intrusion events uh, shown in different colors here on the graph. Here's the magma volume on the y-axis. X-axis is just how many days since the last event began, right? So how many days of magma accumulation did it take before we reach some event? Our current trajectory here is the red line. So this circle here is where we are since that last eruption on July 16th. Um, and then you can see the early eruptions in the period, the ones in late 2023 and into 2024, those are sh shown in these blue and green or teal colors here. And you can see how much different they are just in terms of their slope. The magma accumulation rate was much more rapid. We could accumulate uh, a large amount of magma, you know, in like 20 days or less sometimes 
um, with those early eruptions. But over the last year or so, what we've been seeing is a much slower magma ascent rate. The influx rate slowed down a little bit. And so what we've been seeing over the last several eruptions, I guess the last five or so eruptions, is anywhere from about 70 days of magma accumulation to as many as almost 130 or so days. So here we are here, right around 70-ish days. And so again, we're just kind of getting into this zone where we might see an eruption taking place. And you can see the magma volumes here. Um, so there's that 11 uh, million cubic meters there, the, the sort of lower end limit of the threshold, the higher end limit up here around 23 million cubic meters. So we don't know what the number is that's going to trigger this thing to erupt or create some sort of intrusion, but we're sort of in that window. So just another graph there to kind of help illustrate where we're at right now. Uh, and then looking at uh, the latest thing I got from Bruce Garner, let me share his graph with you and appreciate him for sending this and sharing this with us. So he's been modeling and tracking the GPS data at three specific stations, the HSO2 station, Fartsengi station, and SKSH. So those seem to be uh, some of the best uh, stations to use to sort of model things. And here's the last few eruptions. So this is going back to, it looks like uh, he's going back into spring of 2024. Um, and he's got the eruption here. Looks like in, like we had in late May or so. Yeah, May 29th. And basically what you're seeing here with these uh, blue, yellow, and red lines, uh, this sort of stair step pattern here, is the GPS station's elevation. So the elevation rising, of course, that's the inflation. And then when we get to an eruption or an intrusion event, obviously uh, magma leaves the system, can, comes up to the surface. And so these drop to some level and then the they start to accumulate again, right? The eruption ends at some point and then they start to rise, more magma accumulates, and then we get to another eruptive event. So you can see that stair step pattern across here. Also what he has here in red, blue, and yellow uh, with the lines here is it looks like this is about the time Bruce started to try to forecast these eruptions as best he could with his analysis using some math and other cool stuff. And so you can see here he was off a little bit. Basically, the magma continued to accumulate past his predicted values here until it finally erupted. Uh, but then you can see here on, I guess this is uh, episode six, the eruption that was in August of 2024. Let's see, that was August 22nd. Um, he was pretty close, um, pretty close to right on. Here on the next eruption, which would have been November of 2024, it erupted before it reached his, his predicted uh, values. Then the next event here, which was, um, let's see, this was uh, April 1st of 2025 this year. He was pretty, pretty spot on there. And then the most recent eruption here, which was July of 2025, uh, it looks like it erupted a little below his values there. But, you know, it gives you some sense as to how accurate he's been with his modeling uh, forecasts here. And, it, you know, it, I think it's, if nothing else, it's a, it's a pretty good barometer. I think, um, you know, and I don't know the intricacies of exactly what he's doing. So, and then the, the pink lines here, the columns just indicate how long each eruption lasted. Some were a little bit more longer lived, some were quite short, just a few days. Um, this was incredibly short here. This was the April 1st eruption, which was mostly an intrusion. And so looking ahead, you can see how he's projected those three GPS um, stations out into the future. So here we are here in late September. And based on his, <clears throat> excuse me, based on his analysis here, looks like we're looking at a window of like November 14th to November 20th or so, so is more or less when Bruce Bruce's uh, model here is predicting the next event to take place. Again, he continues to refine this as more data comes in every few weeks or so. So we'll just keep uh, posted posting these as he sends them. But great analysis from Bruce and really I think helps to drive home um, you know, just how, how this eruption has progressed over time, but also the utility of, you know, using an analysis like this to try to uh, at least forecast. Again, we're not trying to predict. We, we cannot, we do not have the tools to say it's going to happen on this day at this time. We don't have that kind of certainty in our uh, data analysis, but we can use some models like this to at least give us a window. And that's what the Met Office is doing. That's what Bruce is doing here. Probably some slightly different methods, I would imagine. And so, you know, that's kind of what we're looking at right now. But it gives us an idea of when we might see 
that next event uh, taking place. So again, thank you to Bruce for sending that along. Uh, appreciate it greatly. I know everyone does. Um, looking at the earthquakes, just looking at the latest data related to when this event might occur, 24 hour earthquakes, basically none. So that's not super helpful. Just, you know, not looking at a lot of earthquakes over the last 24 hours. Although I guess I could add in, um, yeah, no earthquakes there. Here's earthquakes over the past week on the Reykjanes, and you can see basically no earthquakes around the eruption area or where, where we expect the eruption might occur here, just northeast of Grindavik. Typical cluster over here in the uh, Krishivik system near Lake Krevravat. And then I also pulled in like a whole month's worth of data. So looking at the past month and earthquakes in the region over the past month, again, those, those Krishivik quakes have been going on for some time. That's not surprising. We're not seeing any other indications of magma movement there. The GPS and INSAR data are not supporting the idea that these earthquakes are at all related to magma movement. So we believe they are tectonic in origin for the most part. Some of the offshore quakes that we typically see. Um, and then really nothing here northeast of Grindavik. We're just not seeing a lot of earthquakes as of yet. But this would be the time now that we're entering this window. Moving forward, this would be the time to start looking at earthquakes um, and seeing if we see an uptick in earthquake counts per day, per week, per month possibly. And that would maybe be an indicator that, uh, that we're getting inching a little bit closer to that next event. Looking at the GPS data, um, they did finally adjust the, the Svartsengi station to get rid of those some anomalous points that was affecting the scale. So you can see the last event here on July 16th. And then you can see all the dots since then going into August, showing the inflation of the ground as magma has moved up into the system. And you can see where we're at here in late September. So we're still a little shy of the threshold we reached for this station for that July 16th eruption. Looks like we got close to 120 millimeters of uplift on this scale. And currently we're maybe a little bit shy of like 90 or so. So we're looking at maybe another 30 or so millimeters. Again, that's not a, you know, a, a super robust prediction tool, but it gives us a, some way to look at things, right? We know we, had to, we got to this threshold last time to trigger the eruption. Makes sense that that might be a good target this time. But, but we also know that we can have eruptions take place when this isn't quite up to that value. As we've seen in the past that the system might reach that threshold at a lower inflation value, uh, maybe a lower pressurization value. And again, it's just one station out there. There's a lot of GPS stations to look at. Uh, and then lastly here, just looking at the INSAR data, it continues to also reflect the inflation taking place. Here's the latest uh, Terrasar uh, pass from September 4th to September 15th. So you can see the bullseye area there right around Svartsengi. Of course, the eruption area is over here off to the east, but you can see these colored fringes repeating here. Again, with the, the Terrasar data, we're looking at about uh, one and a half centimeters per band. So if we go from this red out to this red here, that's showing us there. there's maybe a one and a half, maybe a tiny bit more uh, centimeters of uplift in during that 11 day period there. So, so we're still on track. We'll still see uh, changes, I would expect, over the next few weeks and months. I'll, I'll be looking at it very closely. I'm sure some of you will as well. If you have anything to share with me, please do. This is a community trying to learn together. That's sort of the idea. Uh, but we'll keep you posted if anything else happens here as we continue to monitor the events on the Reykjanes Peninsula. Thanks for your support of the channel. Appreciate you. And we'll see you next time, team. Take care.